is part two of the series in which we are covering the fundamentals of the standard. In this episode, I will discuss the definition of SWOT profiles and the important changes recently made to them in the latest update to the OpenVPX standard. To review, OpenVPX provides a descriptive nomenclature to define the different elements of a complete system. It defines these systems in terms of backplane profiles, slot profiles, and module profiles. ANSI VITA 46 was the first document in the family of standards. It explained the basic features of OpenVPX and details the physical and electrical features of the standard. VITA 65 introduced rules and permissions and described complete backplanes. As the complexity of VITA 65 grew to support higher bandwidths and new signaling protocols and other features such as radio clocks, RF, and optical feed-throughs, VITA 65 kept expanding. To simplify the addition of new module and backplane dash numbers to existing backplane and module profiles, VITA 65 was broken into two documents in 2017. The primary document, VITA 65.0, has all the basic definitions of existing backplanes, slots, and module profiles. VITA 65.1 was developed to define all backplane, slot, and module dash numbers, as well as descriptions of specific VITA 66 and 67 modules. Backplane profiles are generally defined as a collection of slot profiles and the trace wiring between them. The backplane topology drawing seen here shows in general which slots are connected to each other and the size of those connecting pipes. It is important to note that the order of the planes illustrated in the topology drawing for each slot position does not represent the physical order of those connections in the slot. For instance, the utility plane is always shown at the bottom in the drawing, but is actually found in the very top of each physical slot. Each relevant topology drawing, as well as detailed information on port mappings and related rules and permissions are found in the VITA 65.0 backplane profile chapters. The bandwidth and any other special connector configurations for each backplane are found in VITA 65.1. Each module profile has a chapter in VITA 65.0 as well. The primary uh, slot profile to which they conform is identified and any related rules and permissions are listed. Because each module profile may support different signaling protocols, a dash number is defined for each unique module configuration. These module profile dash numbers are listed as separate rows in the table in VITA 65.1. If different slot profile dash numbers are required, those are also added. Slot profile definitions are one of the most evolved and complex aspects of the VPX standard. Each slot profile is defined in a separate chapter in VITA 65.0. The chapters for slot profiles are divided into sections based on the type of connectors used as well as the intended use of that slow prop, slot profile. However, it is important to note that payload slot profiles may serve as data plane switch profiles and peripheral slot profiles may serve the function of a typical payload slot profile in any given backplane and vice versa. So those aren't really hard and fast uh, definitions. Each slot profile is represented by a colorful figure such as the illustration on the right. This slot profile figure represents the makeup of that slot from top to bottom as physically arranged. At the top is the J0 utility section, and it's always the same, although in 6U cards, VS2 is 12 volts instead of 3.3 as it is in 3U cards. Each connector within a slot profile is defined to support one or more channels of the defined planes. Each full connector segment can be divided into 16 wafers that each support a single bidirectional differential ultra thin pipe link. Recently, wafers have been subdivided to support unidirectional differential links, such as for clocks or maintenance ports. Each colored section represents a different channel, and the color of that section indicates which plane that channel supports. 
areas without color are user defined, meaning that those areas of the slot can be used for undefined signals. The presence of the user defined areas has recently been recognized as the major cause of interoperability issues. This, a slot profile name can be complex, but there are some basic aspects that can be quickly recognized. SLT indicates that it is a slot profile and not a module profile or a backplane profile name. Three or six after the SLT indicates whether it is a 3U or 6U slot profile. Directly following these first four characters is sometimes a lowercase letter that identifies special clock support. When there is no such letter, the slot profile is supported in the backplane by bust aux clock and reference clock signals. Slot type is given as a three-letter abbreviation indicating the type of slot profile and the number of slots follows that. Payload and switch slot profiles are the most common. I want to start over at the beginning of slot six. A slot profile name can be complex, but there are some basic aspects that, that can be quickly recognized. SLT indicates that it is a slot profile and not a module profile or a backplane profile name. Three or six after the SLT indicates whether it is a 3U or a 6U slot profile. Directly following the first four characters is sometimes a lowercase letter that identifies special clock support required for that slot profile. When there is no such letter, the slot profile is supported by the typical bust aux and reference clocks. Slot type is given as a three-letter abbreviation indicating the type of slot profile. Payload and switch slot profiles are the most common, whereas bridge and timing slot profiles are the most rare. Following the slot type is a long section of letter and number combinations that indicate the type of pipes or apertures and the number of each. As slot profiles have become more fully defined, this section of the slot profile name can become quite long and unwieldy. Another unfortunate aspect of this portion of the naming convention is that two different slot profiles may have the same type and number of pipes, but still be different because the sections, although in the same order, are located on different wafers. Apertures are a very important new addition to the slot profile name and will be the subject of another tutorial. At the end of the slot profile name are three decimal numbers and sometimes a dash. This is the most important and only absolutely unique part of the slot profile name. The three decimals identify a specific section of the Vita 65.0 document where the slot profile is defined in detail. The dash number represents the different connector loadings if apertures are included in a slot profile. These slot profile dash numbers, if present, are listed in Vita 65.1. Within a Vita 65 slot profile section, following the cover, colorful slot uh, image and related list of rules and permissions, two or more tables which name each signal position within each connector comprising the slot profile are shown. Each signal name identifies the plane and port which that signal position is part of. TX and RX signals are also identified. For instance, DP01-TD is a data plane. An important aspect of these slot profile tables are the column names given in the top two horizontal rows. The top horizontal row gives the plug-in module column names from A to G. And the second row, horizontal row, is the backplane column names from A to I. This is necessary because plug-in module footprints are compressed and two of the pairs of ground columns were combined. The borders of the table have been accented to help the reader see that there are only seven uh, signal positions for plug-in modules and nine signal positions for backplanes. Despite this, be assured that the backplane connector and the daughter card connector support nine columns at the mating interface. It's just that the grounds at the daughter card footprint have been reduced. Some of the signal names are DP for data plane port, which may be numbered from zero to three if they represent a fat pipe, 
transmit and receive are indicated in the naming as well as plus or minus. Another column, common signal name is CPUTP, which is an ultra thin pipe control plane signal. Again, TX and RX are identified as well as plus and minus. EP represents an expansion plane signal. Unless otherwise noted, the VPX convention is that signals on backplanes are always wired from slot to slot as TX to RX and RX to TX. Plus is wired to plus and minus is wired to minus. A recent trend away from slot profiles uh, with a lot of open user-defined areas and toward slot profiles that are more fully defined. This will increase compatibility and help bring the slogan, one slot, many cards, closer to a reality. Notice that the three slot profiles on the left have a lower J2 section that is completely undefined as represented by the open white space. Even in the J1 region, there is some open space in each of the three slot profiles. The middle figure with all the extension lines is an example of the signal assignments as implemented by one manufacturer as an example of how every possible signal position is used. Having undefined areas in a slot profile has made it difficult for system integrators to second source because backplanes end up being wired for one specific card. The four slot profiles on the right, however, are examples of where the industry is moving. This isn't expected to limit creativity. The cards that are designed for these new slots can have lots of unique internal uh, capability. This approach just requires that they assign common backplane signals in the same way. This evolution towards fully defined slot profiles did not happen simply because Vita member companies thought it would be good for the industry as a whole. This trend is a result of active collaboration between three branches of the defense industry, the Air Force, the Army, and NAVAIR. This trend has its roots in the U.S. Army Vehicular Integration Initiative known as Victory. This growing support across three large organizations represents a potential user group of immense size that is now driving the VPX industry. Although much of this activity began outside of VITA, the new slot profiles have been brought back into the VPX family of standards and can be seen in the most recent release of VITA 65.0 and VITA 65.1. The chassis on the left are examples of systems that have been developed for the defense industry. Each of these chassis represents a single program initiative. The future vision of the Army, Air Force, and NAVAIR is to reduce much of this unique hardware to individual VPX cards that would plug into common slot profiles so that systems can be upgraded more easily over time. This vision requires the slots be fully defined. System management, a long ignored VPX capability, is also undergoing a rebirth and is an integral part of these initiatives. The first uh, two convergent chassis efforts have resulted in two VPX development backplanes and eight unique slot profiles. These new backplanes and slot profiles are already incorporated into VITA 65.0-2017. Seven of these new slots incorporate newly defined apertures. In this uh, illustration, I'm showing actually uh, 10 different new slot profiles, so I'm including some that have recently been proposed. Currently, there are additional slot profiles that have been proposed and voted on within the VSO. Here's examples of two new uh, backplanes that incorporate host and SOSA slot profiles. These backplanes represent the beginning of the chassis integration effort within host and SOSA. Between these two backplanes, as I mentioned, they incorporate eight new fully defined slot profiles, including seven that have apertures. I will talk about apertures in more detail in another web tutorial. Thank you for your time. For more tutorials, go to the ELMA website.